Melissa Muir. I'm a jeweler and metalsmith and in this series of videos we're talking a little bit about the jewel tool. One of the things that I really like to do is use my hydraulic press to create hollow forms but there's multiple steps in that depending on what it is that I'm doing. So in this case I actually have a, a piece that I'm working on. I have textured up one of my copper pieces that's going to be flat. This is going to become my back plate and then I also have a piece that I have domed here. You can kind of see that. And I've just taken and roughly cut this out with a jeweler saw. So what I like to do now, because I could use a file and sit and file this away, but that will take a long time. I can use my jewel tool to do the same thing for me. It'll be very, very quick. So let me show you how I do that now. All right, first things first, you wanna make sure that you've got your safety gear on. I wear my goggles, plus I also have on an apron to just kind of protect my clothing from any of the metal or anything like that. So you'll also notice that I have these little finger cots that I've created. I did that into in another video so you can look at that. So what I'm going to do is I, I've done a rough cut around this, but now I just need to smooth this down a little bit, remove a little bit more material so it fits my shape a little better. So I can go with a fairly gritty um, disc depending on how much metal I need to remove. So in this case, I don't really need to remove that much. So I'm going to go with a 120 grit disc. This is a ceramic one that I'm using. Now I also have a vacuum hooked up to this and a light so that I can easily see what it is that I'm doing. So first thing I'm going to do is turn this on. I'm going to keep my fingers clear of the disc itself and I'm just going to bring this in. I am applying a bit of pressure, but notice that it's going nice and soft. Okay, It's very, very controlled, the movements that I do. And you'll notice that it's a long stroke rather than one that's really short like this. Okay. Another thing too, you don't, when you're done with something, you don't want to pull it or drag it out like this. You actually just want to drop it down. And here we're almost done. Now the reason for the finger cuts is to kind of protect my fingers from the heat on this. This does pick out a lot of heat. Also, you'll notice that I'm running the long side against this and I don't want to take a point into the turn. The wheel turns this way at a very rapid speed. So you do want to be very careful about how you approach the metal on this so that it doesn't catch and take it out of your hands. At this point, I've drilled some holes into this and I've soldered it onto the back plate. You can also see that some of the solder has come up here. I've again roughly cut this out. So now I'm ready to regrind this back down and get it smooth once more. This does heat up quite quickly, so you may want to keep like a bench block close by that you can lay it down on or again use the finger pots. So now I've done the entire piece. I've gone around the entire edge and smoothed everything away. Everything is nice and flush. I do still have some solder that has come up here on the top, but I don't want to be so aggressive with it to use the 120 grit on this. So maybe I'll switch down to the 220 or we could even jump right down to the compressed scotch Bright or the scratch eraser to remove some of that. I'm going to jump down to my scratch eraser, which is a compressed scotch bright. We'll give that a try first, and then if it doesn't work, then I bump it back up to like a 220 grit. So just hand snug that, and now I'm ready to go on this. And again, I'm just going to use that gentle pressure and direct it. And I move this around until I see what it is that I'm looking for. So 
So I am giving it definitely some pressure here. But it doesn't take a whole lot. My metal started off pretty clean to begin with. But this does heat up really, really fast. Everything has now been smoothed out with the scratch eraser except for the texture that's here on the back. So that would be something left to do. However, I'm not going to do much on the jewel tool with that. That's more of just something that we will add some patina and do a little bit of highlight removal with. So the next thing we're going to do is switch this over to our polishing buff. So this is a felt wheel. I have my polishing compound that I'm going to use. It's a mirror finish without any any type of scratches or marks or directional flows from this and really your your best way to do this is by applying a little bit more pressure than what you were doing with some of the other methods so I also find that as long as I leave it sitting in there and watching while those scratches go away that's when I have the best success So at this point, I have a really nice mirror finish on the part that I've done. And that's what you do. So I would finish this up. So at this point, once you go through all of it, sometimes I have a little bit of the polishing compound that sticks on there. But the nice thing about the polishing compound from Jewel Tool is that it is not greasy at all. So a little bit of warm water with a Dawn dishwashing soap and I just rub it off with my fingers and this is now done perfectly. There's no scratches on it, there's no, no marks from the buff or anything like that. So if you have any questions about the Jewel Tool or you like to maybe order something or maybe you just even have questions about which accessories you may need for the type of job that you are doing. Give me a call, drop me a line. My email is down here in the description and you can reach me anytime that way. Thanks so much for watching.